What's happening, everybody? Justin from Donkey Punch Central. We're going to start bringing you some of the solo videos now for our uh, 2011 Donkey Punch Central Awards. Uh, and these are just my personal awards from Mixed Martial Arts for the year of 2011. Uh, just going to be giving some miscellaneous awards in later videos. I'm going to be doing my top ten fighters. Uh, I'm going to be doing uh, knockout and submission of the year. Um, best events. Um, ev you know, everything like that. Fights of the year. Right now what I want to start with is this video. I'm going to be giving away two awards in this video. The first award I'm going to give away in this video is uh, the MMA Idiots of the Year. And, um, you know... There's a lot of idiots to be found in MMA. Some fighters, uh, a large percentage of the fan base. But uh, this year, the MMA Idiots of the Year, 2011 Donkey Punch Central Award for MMA Idiots of the Year, goes to... That's why it's good to have a gut. A large majority of MMA judges in North America. Um... How much longer do we have to go with judging in North America, excuse me, before we figure out a system that you, you're you not getting these ridiculous, um, these ridicu ridiculously horribad decisions? 2011 was another great year, depending on your definition of great, um for really bad decisions. And I know UFC always shrugs it off with like, well, that's why you don't let it go to the judges. But that's fucking stupid. You need... If, you're, if you want this sport to be legitimate, you need to find a better way to judge your fights. Whether it's something like the CompuStrike system... Uh, I, I don't like CompuStrike. I, I, I don't think you can... I don't think you can do away with the human element in judging a fight. I just think you need to have better criteria, a better scoring system, a better... you got to help these judges out a little bit. Because right now the judges are looking like fools. And I don't know if it's a... if it's a product of them just being fools or the scoring system itself. But... At this point, you know, you gotta judge you gotta judge the face on it and the judges themselves are the faces. So a large majority of MMA judges in North America, congratulations, you have won MMA Idiots of the Year. The other uh, award sort award sort of that I wanted to give out this year was I wanted to mention my top five M of MMA's biggest moments of 2011. Uh, just a reminder, of course, a bi the biggest moments doesn't necessarily mean that they were the best moments, uh, and I think there's a couple of prime examples of that uh, in this list. This list is pretty much going to be in no particular order. These are just five events, five moments in MMA that I wanted to highlight specifically. Uh, the first one is the, you know, relatively bad year of Fedor Emelianenko. Um, you know, Fedor, for uh, over ten years, was you know he was he was a world beater. I don't I don't give a fuck what you guys say, what people say about you know oh he didn't face top competition and da 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 da, da all that all that bullcrap and rhetoric. If you watched Fedor fight, you knew Fedor was a world beater. You knew that Fedor could step in there with anybody and take them out. Um, now, in the latter part of his career, he had a couple of had a couple of difficult losses this year. He lost to uh, Bigfoot Silva in the first round of the um, of the Strike Force Heavyweight Grand Prix, which we mentioned before. Uh, and he then went on and lost to Dangerous Dan Henderson, which I mean, no shame in losing to Dan Henderson uh, at all. Um, but that's those two losses made for three losses in a row, which, you know, if if by UFC rhetoric means, oh, he's a can and he should be cut and everything like that, um, sort of came back with a win against Jeff Monson later later this year, and uh, on the New Year's Eve card, I believe he's fighting uh, Ishii. So, um, that's the, that's the, on the Dream New Year's Eve card, I believe that fight is official now. Um, 
but you know, Fedor, you know, Fedor had a bad year, and for um, for for hardcore fans of MMA, that's uh, you know, it's it, it's noteworthy, but sort of for all the wrong reasons. But you got you got to make mention of it. And another one that may be seen as noteworthy for all the wrong reasons, Zufa, the parent company of the UFC, purchasing Strikeforce. Um, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing for uh, Zufa to own Strikeforce. This is basically giving UFC almost a monopoly, except for Bellator, so go Bellator. Um, but yeah, so Zufa purchased Strikeforce. You can have a lot of these sort of dream fights that that you, you know, everybody talked about, oh, you know, uh, Overeem could kick Lesnar's ass, and well, we're going to find out if Overeem can kick Lesnar's ass now, because now they're going to fight. So it's a good thing, and it's a bad thing. But it's there. Uh, the first ever UFC event coming into Ontario, in Canada. Um, last year, obviously, we made mention of uh, MMA being sanctioned in Ontario. This year, they had their first fight. They packed Sky Dome full of 55,000 people, headlined by George St. Pierre and Jake Shields. And uh, that was a good, that was a great card. That's actually a card that you may see come up in one of my videos a little bit later, who knows. Um, but no, it was it was a good card. The main event was kind of a stinker, but it was it I mean it was a good card. Fifty five thousand people. Huge step towards the continuing legitimacy of mixed martial arts in in uh, in pop culture. Um, Josh Barnett and Chael Sonnen's promos, post fight promos uh, and how close they are to pro wrestling promos. Uh, I love making fun of hardcore MMA fans because anytime anybody tries to talk about pro wrestling, they're all like, oh, fuck pro wrestling. Pro wrestling's terrible. It's WWE shit and all that bullcrap. And then you got two guys, popular guys, fan favorites, like Josh Barnett, going out after winning a fight and is like, I'm not going to stop until I'm standing on top of a pile of bones with 18 pounds of gold in my hand. Pure pro wrestling promo. Um, and Chael Sonnen uh, doing his Anderson Silva, You Absolutely Suck, uh, which was pro wrestling promo 101, basically setting up like a loser leaves town match. Uh, and I mean, those both of those promos were just fucking fantastic and it's always nice to sort of take the take those promos and sort of point in the hardcore MMA fans face going ha 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 pro wrestling so you know those were those were two those were probably bigger moments for me than for MMA itself but uh, you know I, I'm happy to see MMA more embrace the entertainment aspect of sports and of course I'd be remiss if I didn't mention uh, Chang Sung Jung, the Korean Zombies Twister Submission. Um, Eddie Bravo, 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu, much respect. Um, first time a Twister Submission has ever been used in UFC. It's been used in MMA before, but first time it's ever been used in the UFC. And it was kind of funny because Joe Rogan doing commentary for the fight. Uh, even mentioned, he's like, wow, you know, he's kind of in a position to pull a twister here if he wants to, because, you know, Joe Rogan and, and, and Eddie Bravo are, are quite close, and he's on his podcast all the time. Uh, and then he just tosses his arm over, and he's got it, and he looks like he's going to rip Leonard Garcia in half. Uh, it's actually a little uncomfortable to watch. And he gets, I mean, he gets a submission with one second left in the round. So that was that was beautiful. That was a huge pop. Um, Chang Sung Jung actually had a really good year this year because then he went out and knocked out Mark Hominick in seven seconds. But that's my award, the, my my preliminary awards anyway. Uh, so, uh, top five MMA's biggest moments of the year for 2011, as well as the MMA Idiots of the Year award. Thank you very much for watching. Come on back, check out some of my other MMA videos, and pretty soon we'll be moving into video games and movies.